James II of the Scots was a keen advocate of artillery, which he utilized in the Siege of Roxburgh in 1460. Unfortunately, he was standing too close to one artillery piece that exploded, killing him on the field. The development of the cartridge of shot and powder in a bag happened around 1620 and was readily adopted, and with it, the worm, a corkscrew-type tool to clear the barrel after each firing to extract unburnt cartridge bag. Another general, Gustavus Adolphus, is credited with developing the use of cannon in the battlefield to suppress cavalry. He combined musketeers and pikemen as the gunner's force protection. They were an effective fighting force. Larger numbers of cannon combined to create an effective field of fire. However, the battle always depended on the infantry. As a historical footnote, the combination of musketeer and pikeman became a military axiom. Even today, assault rifles have bayonet attachments. Charles VIII of France invaded Italy in 1494. He was a keen disciple of artillery. Technology of the day had allowed cannon to be cast in bronze. Lightweight and drawn by horses, they could keep up with the main body of an army on the march. By 1550, there were numerous sized cannon as there was no standardization. The English had 16 sizes, from the Cannon Royal at four tons and firing a 75 pound shot, to the smallest Rabina at 300 pounds and firing a five ounce shot. The categories of size were named after birds of prey or fabulous beasts. There was the Basilisk 8.75 inch cannon, the Culverin 4.5 to 5.5 inch caliber, the Saker, the Minion, the Falcon and the Falconet at two inches. There was a long list of other types and variants within each grouping and subgroups often called bastards. There were slings, murderers, flankers, shrimps, orgs, aspics and sparrows.